The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 8, you are sometimes in darkness, but now your children of light walk you in the light. Somebody say, if you're a ch child of the light, and Jesus is the light of the world, amen. If you're a child of the light, somebody say, you choose light. You don't choose darkness. You know why people can choose darkness so easy? Because they're still in the dark. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. If any man come after me, he'll not walk in darkness, but in the light of life. John 8 and 12. And I invite you to go back and listen to this morning's service called God's Choice. Uh, I promise you, <laughs> there's no shades of gray in it nowhere. <laughs> it is distinguishing, discerning between the light and the dark and what, what really is God's choice, what he chooses. Deuteronomy 30 verses 19, he said, I you know, call you to record this day. Amen. I set before you life and death. Amen. Blessing and cursing. And then he tells you what to do. He gives you two. You can choose this or choose that. But then God says, if you're mine, here's what I tell you to choose. Choose life that you and your children might live. And the Bible said in Matthew 6 and 21, if, if, if the light that is in you is really darkness, well then how great is your darkness? If you can select, elect, choose, vote for any uh, uh, political candidate, like Pastor Tyler said, that is for the murder, the abortion of the unborn, Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Friend, that is not a child of light. That's a child of the dark. And the reason people can so easily select the dark is because they're still in the dark. There's no way if you're walking with him, the light of the world, that you could choose something, amen, that's that dark and demonic. Because Psalms 106, 37 and 38, said about the ancient Israel that's recorded in the Bible when God brought judgment on them. He told them, he said, you have sacrificed the innocent blood of your sons and daughters, and in doing so, you have done that unto devils. You've sacrificed them unto devils demons and you've polluted the land with blood. Some ought to say abortion is murder. It is satanic sacrifice. These political leaders that say this is the norm and it's okay amen my friend are nothing but Satanists. They're high priestess of Satanists. Sa they're Satan worshipers. Come on somebody. It's a child sacrifice. It's an occult. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. So there's no way the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth amen this light can live in you and you choose something that's for that. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit or even this transgender cult that's going on where you know they want to make it where uh, your kids uh, can choose to have their sex changed and don't even have to have any permission from a parent. Amen. Let the parents teach children about sex. Let the church teach the children. Amen. About sexuality. Praise God and what God requires and let the teachers just go back to teaching math and English and, and uh, come on you understand what what I'm saying praise God anybody hear the Holy Ghost but uh, we're living in a day amen where we see a lot of confusion and uh, it is not Christianity I promise you it may be political Christianity but it's not biblical Christianity amen it is it may be the self-identifying Christianity but it ain't the born-again Christianity anybody hear the Holy Spirit there's no way amen you could select and elect that and be for that knowing that God says here's what I tell you Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 choose life. Somebody say choose life. It is just that easy. Choose life. In 1 Kings 18 and 21, Elijah said to Ahab, uh, the husband of that old wicked woman Jezebel, that political witch, amen, and he said, how long are you going to halt between two opinions? If Baal be God, follow him, but if the Lord be God, follow him. And it said the people answered him not a word. We're living in a culture within the church world today that don't answer. They don't respond to these messages. These messages offend them. You know why people so offend ended at the truth because they're still living in the dark. Their, their so-called light is really darkness. Somebody say when you're walking in the light of his word because the entrance of his word brings light, Psalms 119, 130, his word is not just something you hear, it is something you rejoice over because it's the truth. Thy word is pure, therefore your servant loveth it, Psalms 119, 140. Somebody say when you're a lover of truth, you love when you hear it. Come on somebody, it don't offend you. Amen. Great peace have they that love his law. Nothing offends 
them. Psalms 119, 165, somebody say, if you hate the Bible, it offends you when you hear the truth. And he said, thy word is truth, sanctify them with truth. Amen, John 17 and 17. Somebody say, real truth sanctifies. It cuts. It's supposed to. Amen, it's supposed to sever. Come on now, from that that's not of God. In, in uh, Genesis 1, 4, in the beginning, God divided light from darkness. And he has never brought darkness and light together again. We don't sit down at the tables and make treaties with Jezebel. Come on, somebody. We don't sit down at the tables and make treaties, uh, amen, with the dark one. There is no place uh, of agreement with darkness when light is in the room. You don't believe me? You turn all the lights off, darkness takes over. But as soon as you flip the switches and the light comes on, darkness flees. They cannot cohabitate. And if a person's okay, amen, with darkness, it's because they're still in the dark. And they've got used to the dark, like the old song the McCamies used to sing, getting used to the dark. And a lot of people, even in the church world, are doing that. And you can't halt between two opinions. If you do, you've got the spirit of Ahab, and you're under the influence, the seduction of Jezebel, that spirit, amen, that political witch and that political witchcraft that's even driving the narrative, amen, of this satanic uh, outbreak of abortion and transgender cult and all this sexual sleaze we see that's just... Uh, rampant in our nation and that uh, you know people is messed up when they think a man can be pregnant uh, when they think of uh, uh, tampons ought to be in the uh, boys bathroom in the fourth grade somebody say man this 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 stuff's demonic this this stuff is beyond even common sense uh, you either select confusion or you just select that that's common sense uh, and the bible said in second timothy chapter three verses three during the latter times about the perilous times in the last days which are troubled times it says one of the repercussions of that day and time of men's sinful actions it said in 2 Timothy 3 3 that they would not have natural affection somebody say they would have unnatural affections at the end of that scripture it says they'll be despisers of those that are good somebody say unnatural affection what is it when a man wants to be sexually involved with another man that is an unnatural affection. When a woman likewise wants to be sexually involved with another woman, that is unnatural affection. And these are the same ones that are despisers of those that are good. But they've defined good or acceptable according to their opinion and they've changed the truth of God into a lie and they worship themselves humanism, the creature, the creation rather than the creator which is blessed forever and ever. Amen. Romans 1 25 then verse 26 and 27 says women live leave their natural use. That's it's against nature. Amen. Women with women. And then likewise, men leave the natural use of the woman and burn in their lust. It is not love. They burn in their lust one for another, doing that which is unseemly. Somebody say receiving the recompense of the era. E R R O R the era of their ways that is meet or that is just. Somebody say God called it era. Hey Amen. It'll always be era. It don't matter. You can change the truth into a lie, but it is still the truth. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? And when people start doing this, they are then despisers of those that are good and they're re a man defining what good is or what acceptable it is. But Ephesians 5, the Bible said in verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. God's the only one that has defined what good is. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? He's the only one that gets to say what is good. And friend, I'll tell you what the God good, I'm not talking about the demons good, because demons, a man will call evil good. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? A man, God's good is this. It is not good to kill babies in the womb. It is not good for men and men to be sexually involved. There's no sex involved anyhow. The Bible calls it sorrow. Of me. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody say it is not good. Amen. For little boys to think they can be a girl and little girls think they can be a boy. Somebody say this is not good. This is not goodly. This is not godly. Defined according to scripture. And the Bible tells us clearly in Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 9 the Bible said proven this is what God says. This is the fruit of the spirit. Somebody say the fruit of the spirit. Goodness, righteousness and truth. 
God says, here's what's good, the righteous truth. Not what people define as truth and reinvent and as according to their opinion and their sexual desire, their lust, to rename and say this is truth. But God says, here's what's good. Somebody say what God calls good is truth and righteous. Righteous truth, that is what's good. So good is only defined by God. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Proverbs 14 and 25 says, there's a way that seems good unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That lets me know in the hour we live, there's a lot of people redefining what good is, and they're following their good and not our God. Amen. Our God is good. Amen. But listen, the word good means what he accepts, what is acceptable to God. And somebody shout a man, and a man is not acceptable to God and will never be. Far as the relationship that's intimate, neither will it be with women. Oh, and neither will it ever be concerning not the political subject, but the uh, not just the moral subject, amen, but the biblical issue of abortion. It is murder. It is Satanism. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? God will never say that's okay. God will never say this is acceptable. God will never say this is good. And anybody that's saying it is, they're sent from hell. I don't care how eloquent their speech is. Oh, glory to God. Proverbs or Romans 1 22 says they profess to be wise but they become fools fools talk like that according to scripture come on anybody hear the Holy Ghost somebody shout this is devilish this ain't wisdom that comes down out above from above this is devilish this is demonic this is from a familiar spirit a familiar spirit means to conjure up and to speak from the ground these are words coming out of hell they ain't coming out of heaven friend this day amen that we're living in and in the next two days and if you're watching this in the future it may be Tuesday amen glory to God this ain't about choosing a party that's political Amen. One with an elephant. Amen. Or one with a donkey. This is about deciding between life and death, blessing and cursing, good and evil. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of hell? Somebody shout, those are the two choices. And you can't be a halter. You can't sit in the middle and say, I don't choose nary one of them. Because whoever wins, that's who you voted for without vote. I'd rather know when it's all said and done, no matter what happens, no matter who, God will still be on his throne. But my conscience will be clear that I know that I know I did my part as a saint of God. And I engaged in this spiritual warfare because that's what it is. Amen. And I did like Ahab, or excuse me, not Ahab, but what Elijah did toward Ahab in 1 Kings 18 and 1. Amen. God told him to arise and go show yourself to him. Somebody say arise and go show up. Go show up and speak up. Hey, how I speak up. I don't go to where they vote and that and run my mouth and holler and start fights and feuds. Amen. Come on. No. I walk in there. I show them my license and I show them I'm an American and I'm registered. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. And, I, and then I go and I, in silence I walk over there to that machine or whatever it is I vote and I cast my ballot and I've done did it. I did it three weeks ago. Oh glory to God. That's how I show up. That's how I let my voice be known for an unborn baby that can't speak and defend themselves. Hallelujah. Anybody to hear the Holy Ghost. That ain't reproductive rights. Reproductive rights is sex prior to getting pregnant. That's reproductive rights. Reproductive rights and women's health ain't got nothing to do with killing another life inside of a womb. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? That is murder. In Jeremiah 1 5, God said, Before I knew you, I formed you in the womb. Somebody say, Before conception, God told Jeremiah, I already knew you, I already planned you oh glory to god amen well there's just a quick recap from this morning i didn't plan to do all that but it's brother tyler's fault everybody pointed at him and said it's your fault pastor tyler. hallelujah he got me started of course it don't get me it don't take me too much to get started on that any hallelujah because i ain't just started preaching this y'all hear me preach this amen all the time i've got our church kicked off of youtube and uh two years ago this month amen and, and that day i'll have to show you all the picture sometime i got the proof of it they they considered to me to be hate speech and they told me i violated their community guidelines preaching like this that i was inciting hatred 
toward a group of people. Pre just preaching what I just, just preaching the Bible, what God says. That's the, that's the day and hour we live in, and that's the administration, amen, that is in existence right now in our Oval Office that has supplied these companies to be able to suppress your mind free speech. Who had ever thought I'd have got banned in 2020 on YouTube, or not just YouTube, but on, on uh, Facebook? I'd be preaching healing services and say, Jesus' virtue is stronger than the virus. And they, and they would ban me for two weeks at a time sometimes. They'd take me off the air, amen, just cause it. And, and, and they're the ones that they want our free speech, and they're the ones behind the terms, the political terms, they, uh, disinformation, misinformation. No, the Bible just says there's truth and lies. But they're the ones behind all that. And everything that's not what they agree with, that's what it's considered according to their fact checkers. Where I'm a faith checker, praise God. I'm not a professional, but I am anointed and called. Hallelujah. And it is my job to do some faith checking, especially among the community of faith and those that say they believe. So I'm not preaching this to the world. They're going to mock it. Amen. Glory to God. I, they'll world to hear it, but I'm, I'm preaching it. Amen. To the saints. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord hath redeemed hath delivered out of the hand of the enemy Psalms 107 and 2 and we say so amen with our vote praise God to God be the glory and the church said amen and I better move forward like the song I'm about to sing says or I'll keep on preaching this just give yeah well I told y'all this morning you know wait before y'all play I told y'all this morning we was going to continue on with that message but it was 1 30 when we got out of here this morning and uh, not because that's normal for us anyhow uh, but the Lord told me after the service, when I was meeting with the insurance people here, they was walking around. They was actually here during service. I still ain't figured that one out, but, you know, from the damage from the storm, and I had to hang around with them. But after I was leaving, after talking with them, the Lord told me, he said, that was enough. You don't need to go any further with that uh, uh, as far as a title and a message, though I just went further with it, but I just recapped it, really, what we did. And we stopped from, you know, in Hosea 8 and verses 4, when God told the people that had left that that was good, verses 3, as people, and evil was going to pursue them. He said the reason it shows that they had left what God considered acceptable and good, it said because in verse 4 of Hosea 8, Hosea said the people had chose kings, had set up kings, but not of me, says the Lord. In other words, they chose leaders that God didn't choose. They chose leaders that had rejected God and were not God's choice. That's why I preached like I did this morning. So please go back and watch that, share that. There's hundreds of people that's done watched it. I don't have the capability to make videos like I usually do uh, as far as after a service. I'll do what I can with my phone. I've, I've uh, uh, like I told y'all this morning, that, that computer has, uh, it ain't backslid, it needs a funeral, praise God. I mean, it's, it's had it. It's almost 12 years old, it was about time. So, uh, But we'll do what we can, but share those live stream videos. They're a little longer, the live streams are a little longer, amen. But uh, hundreds of people since this morning, I'm talking about in the hundreds, have done watch that, and some of the most shares I've seen uh, in a long time. So. Uh, uh, it's, it's very bold, it's confronting, but it's the absolute truth, and that's what truth does. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So, God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight in the house of the Lord. And